gonna tell you a secret. There are places in our world where fiction and dreams can come true, powered by the dark energies leaking from beyond. These places are a battlefield in a war between the powers of light and darkness. I'm Alan Wake, a writer, a creator. I know the rules of the game. My specialty is fiction that can change the world. Words of power that can bend reality to my will. Oh, it's you. Something horrible is coming. He's called Mr. Scratch. He's after my wife, Alice. Do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. I can't return to the real world. I've tried, but I'm operating on dream logic, forcing the door open a crack so I can slip through. Fiction wants to come true. All you need to do is help it achieve its potential. Under these peculiar, exceptional circumstances, any story, any urban legend, any lie can come true.
I've seen the enemy, and it's me. I faced dark horrors before, things that live in the unimaginable pressures of the world beyond our own. Sometimes they masquerade as humans. That's what ultimately lurks inside Mr. S He's every mean-spirited tabloid story about me, an evil caricature, a creature formed in that vague territory of misconceptions, half-truths, and the dark imagination of people who heard a story about me. An urban legend made flesh, a serial killer, my dark half, brought to life by the power of Cauldron Lake. As a storyteller, my first real love was crime. And it was in that genre that I finished my first novel, starring the perpetually miserable Alex Casey, whose entire life was a wound that never healed. The books sold as fast as they hit the shelves. I wrote five more Alex Casey books, and they all were bestsellers. I became rich. I became famous. Success brought pressure, and I didn't handle it very well. I've carried a flashlight and a gun for so long that I feel naked without either. It's all too often that I need them. The darkness protects the taken. Shadows crawl over their forms like living things, protecting them from harm. Blows that would injure or kill a human outright mean nothing to them as long as the darkness persists. But light makes them vulnerable. Light burns the shadows away. The darkness that drives them is still in them, but now they're vulnerable. Flashlight and gun. Sometimes it feels they're all I have left. The pressure of success got to me. My wife, Alice, was the sole thing in my life that anchored me. Suddenly, it wasn't enough. I couldn't write anymore. I distracted myself with wild parties and whatever trouble I could scare up. 
I wallowed in the drama of my life, sure that Alice would stick with me even though she didn't sign up to be the lifeline of a tortured artist. It was my dumb luck she's not the type to give up. Thank <laughs> you. 
The spiders aren't really the work of the enemy. They're a side effect, a part of the dark place's less significant fauna that has managed to slip through the opening I made when I arrived. Less an animal than an idea that has assumed the form of an animal. Makes them no less dangerous, but at least they're a little easier to deal with. The darkness doesn't protect them like the Taken, and thus they can be destroyed by either light or bullets right away. Hello? I'm Dr. Rachel Meadows and... Wait a moment, it's you! I can't believe you dare show your face around here again! <laughs> It wasn't me. I just look like him. Are you serious? That's what you're going with? Please! I'm trying to stop him. You saw those shadow things trying to kill me, right? I bet he got along with them just fine. Yes. Yes, he did. All right. Come on in. Thank you. I figured I'd take a moment to talk to you. There's a party next door. I'm feeling pretty good right now. A little beer, a little fun, you know? It's nice. Listen, this whole thing between us, it's a little weird for me too, you know? I mean, we don't just look the same, there's a lot we share. I mean, up here. I know you, right? So I was thinking maybe we could... These guys are getting out of control. Look, I feel like we're both victims of circumstance here. And maybe we could make some kind of effort to...
Never mind. Just a moment, I'll send the lift down to you. I didn't expect to see anyone here tonight, but I'm relieved to see an actual person. That's assuming this isn't some kind of cruel trick on your part, of course. Doctor, the man who looked like me, what did he want here? There's a strange astronomical event happening right now, something I can't begin to classify, but I think it's disabled our satellite. There's a very peculiar signal that we're receiving. A signal? That's what I'm here for. Well, so was he, but he didn't seem to understand it at all. He got very angry, sabotaged our imaging array, and now we're blind. I believe the event is still going on, but we can't pick it up. Is there something we can do? What he broke is essentially just a special camera, but we can't use the telescope without it. There's a replacement in my car. If you can get that to me, we're back in business. Consider it done. Tell me more about the signal. It's almost as if something's being transmitted to Night Springs. It's the strangest thing. It's quite elusive, almost as if it wasn't properly there. I don't know how to describe it. So, what was the signal like? I wish I knew. He appeared before I had a good fix on it. He was very pleasant when I was working, but when I isolated the signal, he suddenly forced me out of the control booth. He said it was none of my business. He seemed to... to change. Somehow, he... He was very smooth and charming before that, but suddenly he became... I'm sorry. I'm not sure I want to talk about it. I have to ask, do you always wear that to work? I was at a party for a local art exhibition. Fascinating works. When I was called away by my assistant, Michael was the first to spot this event. I don't know where he is now, actually. He was supposed to bring us some food, but he never showed up. Tell me about the event. 
Oh, it's quite fascinating. It looks as if stars were changing, somehow. Or shifting positions. It isn't really happening, of course. Most likely it's caused by some kind of atmospheric refraction phenomenon. But I've never seen anything like it. Did he hurt you? No. He didn't quite threaten me exactly, but those shadowy things started to crawl into view, and whatever the signal was, he seemed to be extremely frustrated by it. He just started breaking things and left. I thought it best not to interfere. You were lucky. He's done much worse. Yes. He showed me a knife, and he kept talking. He enjoyed the sound of his own voice. A proper maniac. You really aren't anything like him, are you? Believe me. I try very hard not to be. sounded more callous than I intended. Ah, uh, be safe.
This must be her car. Found it! Excellent. I'll operate the platform directly below the telescope so you can install the array. Don't worry, it's very easy.
Hmm. Brilliant, you've got it. I'll just run a quick diagnostic on it. Yes, it's in perfect order. All right, we're good to go. Let's take a look at the skies. What? Well, you could go and open the secondary coolant flow valves manually. I know it's dangerous there, but, well... I got it! Please come talk to me if you have questions. There's something I should know about this coolant thing? Oh no, it's quite straightforward. The telescope is very heavy, and moving it generates a lot of heat. So do all of the electronics. Overheating could cause damage, so it shuts down automatically if the coolant fluid isn't flowing. And hot electronics generate instrument noise, which we want to eliminate as much as possible. What is this coolant anyway? Is it dangerous? We use liquid nitrogen. It's quite safe. If I can make it to the valves in one piece. Yes, there is that. Good luck. I'm assuming you didn't have this kind of trouble using the telescope earlier, when my double was here. No, it went very smoothly. Until he turned into a nutter. This doppelganger of yours doesn't seem to want anyone else to look at this phenomenon. Honestly, it seems a little pointless to me. There are many eyes on the sky. I'm not sure what we're gonna get once this thing is working again, but I have a hunch. I doubt it has anything to do with outer space, or that anyone else can see it. I think it's a message for me. For you? That seems unlikely. And even if it were a very localized phenomenon, surely it's visible to others in the area. Maybe. But I wouldn't bet on it. There's a reason he came here, and a reason he doesn't want me looking at it.
That should do it. the valves, Doctor. Is it working? Just bear with me a moment. Yes, I believe you've got it sorted. It's working again. Nicely done. That sounds like trouble. I don't think they're happy with our success. Look out, they found a way in. I still have no idea what I'm looking at, but it's very strange, very strange indeed. Oh, where are my manners? Please, come on up. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Receiving the signal now. Oh yes, it's coming in loud and clear. It's amazing. I'm not sure what it is yet, let alone where it's coming from, but it's interacting with our system somehow, like it was intended for us. But I don't understand how that could be. Maybe that's just how the story goes. What? Never mind. Is there a way I can hear it, or however this is supposed to work? 
I think the signal is incomplete somehow, but you should be getting a printout of it now. What do you mean it's incomplete? It's almost as if we're only getting a fragment of it. I need the whole thing. This is important. I'm sure it is, but this is all we're getting. Did the man who looks like me get the whole thing? He locked me out of the booth, so I have no way of knowing. But I can tell you that he didn't really seem to understand it. So, what's in the sky? It doesn't make any sense. The stars are just... they're wrong. I thought I'd be able to see something, but it's like I'm looking at a sky that's just... it's not the right sky. But that's impossible. I consider myself a rational man, Doctor. But this isn't a thing you can measure or explain. I I've seen impossible things that have taught me just to roll with some punches. It's either that, or go insane. I find it disturbing that you sound like you're speaking from ample experience. A printout of a signal. It, too, is a weapon created by the Champion of Light. In its words, stirs a new reality. But it is incomplete. And yet, it provides a roadmap for the man to follow, a course that will lead him to a place where he may confront his enemy. The drive-in. Once the site of lurid celluloid fantasies, it's now the site of an art exhibition. And yet, it's the search for closure rather than culture that brings the champion of light here. <laughs> 